shapes and styles, sharing art adventures and happy smiles. Climb aboard and let's get started. Our pets, our pets, we are the art pets. Hello. It's a beautiful, bright, sunny morning here and a perfect day for painting. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add your wash to our painting of T-Rex. This is a complicated painting with a lot of detail, so I will use a separated colour wash as this makes it easier to see the individual colours and spaces as we build our painting layers. Now, as usual, I've done out a new drawing of T-Rex because I like to keep my pencil drawing as a pencil drawing, so I've simply done a much more simplistic outline drawing than the one I did before and you can still see the guidelines that I suggested you use in, in your drawing that I showed you how I use in mine so you can see my general guidelines in my ovals and my shapes etc I don't worry about painting though or rubbing those out when I'm doing the painting because the paint will cover over that but where I put in a lot of shade and texture into the last drawing and this one I kept it just as a simple outline because I'm just filling in the spaces essentially and I also have left out the teeth of T-Rex because they're very small and fiddly details and I know I add those in when I'm doing the painting so I'm not going to worry about those for now. So all we're looking for in our wash is a simple flat range of colours to describe the different spaces. So for example the sky, the two different colours on T-Rex, the greys and the pinks, the soft distant mountains in the background that have a slightly blue or even a turquoise blue colouring, the sandy colour and the greens for the foliage. So we're just looking for a simple colour to describe each of those so we know exactly where we are, we are with the painting as we move into our second stage. Now, as before, your colours don't have to be exactly the same. The process in acrylic painting is you work from dark to light. So we build in our flat dark washes and then we build from there back towards the light. So even though the lights on the photograph are the first thing you see, they are oftentimes the last thing we add in from our painting. So to create that layering and that depth, we start with those dull colours and then we layer back towards the lights over several stages. And I would imagine it's going to, we're going to do our T-Rex over approximately three stages as we've done most of the other paintings. That's what we look for generally. Now, as you can see, we have our colours. I have my titanium white, I have my cobalt blue. Here today, I'm introducing, I don't think I introduced you this one before, this is called Cerulean Blue and it's a really nice nice warm bright blue and it's great for getting those lovely soft tones particularly those little turquoise colours. I have my medium yellow, my sap green, my cadmium red and my phthalo green because you can see some of these greens are very very zingy and bright and I need to mix those with the yellow to get that. So we'll simply start with sky and because it's a wash we'll use just a little bit of water but not too much otherwise it makes it too runny. Now you can see my sky has some pale blues and some lovely soft pinks in the background. You can put those in there if you wish or we can leave those till the next time. I'm not too worried about putting those in there. I'm simply going to work with just the idea of the basic blue colouring itself for now. So I'm mixing my white and my cobalt blue and just mixing up a simple flat blue for my background sky. And we just put that in quite loosely. You can see I'm using my bigger brush. You needn't be too neat and tidy. Just loosely with your brush brushing that in. I use a little bit more water because that's a bit too heavy and textured just to work in there. Now obviously it is important to be careful around the shape of the T-Rex that you've created so we don't want to be too heavy handed with that at this point in time. Now there, just blocking that in. And because I'm doing it on card, it's a heavy type of paper I'm using, um, it may well buckle a little with the water you'll see little bubbles coming into it. That's okay. If that happens to you, don't panic. Don't worry. When the painting dries, they dry flat out anyhow. So you don't have to worry about trying to be too perfect with those. You could, of course, do your painting on a board or on a canvas if you wanted to, and that wouldn't happen if you're using a board or a canvas. So just carefully shaping out the outlines of T-Rex with my basic blue wash on the sky around the tongue. That's it. And I said you don't have to be too neat and tidy with how you apply your blue sky or how you apply your colours. You can be quite lively and playful with them. And around the foliage I needn't be as careful because I have a lot more flexibility with that than I would have with T-Rex. Now, continue there and just fill in the rest of that sky. <laughs> That's the idea of the sky complete. Um, I'm now going to work in on, when I have that blue, I'm going to add a little bit of the cerulean blue to it. And I'm going to touch more white, and I'm going to use that cerulean blue rather, 
as my mountain colour for now. Somewhat different from the sky, so I can see the difference between the two spaces. Now, it's very bright, and that's okay. As I said, I'll tone it down when I'm in my second stage. I'm not trying to look for perfect colours. Where the wash is really useful is, apart from putting in the flat basic colours on which you build the rest of your painting, it's also an, an opportunity to experiment with your colours and to play. So if you have in mind that you might like to try a slightly different colour, it's a great way of just testing out your colours very easily and very simplistically at this point in time. Just block into there. And the same on the other side. So yes, if you had an idea that, look, I'd like to try something different than that which I see on my photograph, now's a good time to do that before you put all the heavy colours in. And if it works, great. And if it doesn't, well then, it's very easily changed. These are a fascinating creature. And um, actually, with that in mind, here are a few more fun facts about T-Rex. His arms were so tiny that they couldn't reach its mouth. But these were very useful for grabbing hold of its prey. T-Rex was extremely heavily built and walked upright on powerful large back legs. Its large tail helped to balance the weight of its head and chest. It had good eyesight for seeing its prey from a distance and also had an excellent sense of smell. When it killed its prey, it would eat as much as possible and then be satisfied for several days. Not unlike tigers and lions today. And scientists are now beginning to believe that it may have had feathers. Hmm, that would have looked very funny and interesting. Not that I would say to T-Rex. Hmm. Okay, so now that I have my blue um, on the sky and on the mountains finished. I'm now going to use that blue as the foundation. I've since added a little bit of brown to my palette and I'm going to put a little bit of brown in there with my blue and white and that will help me to make, that's right, a grey. You can see a slightly greyish colour and I'm going to use that here on the back of T-Rex. They were very interesting facts. I, I, yeah, they're fascinating creatures. I didn't know about them until we came here to planet Earth and I have to say, extraordinary history. Of dinosaurs on this planet. We don't have any dinosaurs on planet Fluff. Um, scary though. I wouldn't like to be beside one. Now you can see my grey is not exactly the same as that. That has a slightly greenish tone. That's okay for now. I'm not worried about that. I simply want a basic grey. Mine actually looks quite violet and that's okay. And I've shaped up some of the little bumps and lumps around the outside of the head. That's okay there. Fill those in. Now, I'm purposely being a little bit more textural with this because you can see the body on T-Rex. It's very rough. It's very rugged. It's very textural. And so I want to try and express that in my painting. So rather than being too neat and tidy, I'm purposely using my brush with a little bit more ruggedness and leaving the paint sit with a little bit of texture on the surface in preparation for the next stage. So I'm not trying to be too neat and tidy because... Apart from getting the colours, I also want to express, as I said, in my painting, the ruggedness and the drama and the sense of T-Rex. At this stage, down around the back of the leg. And my outline doesn't have to be too neat and tidy either because, as I said before, they have very rugged, rough bodies. So you can see they're very bony and that was all part and parcel of the way in which they protected themselves from attack from other animals and other T-Rex, other dinosaurs. I should say. to do is rather than starting off a nice clean pink as you can see I haven't had to wash my brush just yet I'm now going to add a little bit more white into that color I was using a moment ago this slightly grayish color and then I'm going to bring a little bit of red and mix up that color that slightly pinky color that we see on the underside of T-Rex I'm going to mix that up using the basic gray that I had for the top part with a touch of red and I'm also going to add just a little bit of yellow to it now, I don't have to be this fussy with the wash colours if I don't want to be, but it's a great way, as I said earlier, of just testing my colours and getting used to the colours I'm going to use when I go into my second stage. So anything that gives me a little bit more information about the colours or about T-Rex or whatever the subject is I'm painting, I will always try and utilise that. Because the more information I have, the easier it is to capture what I want to in my painting, to show it the way I wish it to show it. 
So that's perfect colour for the underside of T-Rex. And around the neck, around the jaw. Goodness me, look at the size of those jaws. They are terrifying. It must have been an extraordinary sight to see those wandering around. Now, and I believe you've made some movies about them. I've seen one or two of the movies. Bits of them, rather, that Molly Bell and Tron have showed me. Very exciting. A bit scary, but very exciting. And uh, all the way down around here to that space. They make wonderful paintings. I, I think we might do other dinosaurs as well, just to create a range of them because they're such an interesting creature. And down around the jaw there. And then inside, you can see, um, the you have the inside of the jaws, you can see the tongue, which is very pink, the inside of the roof of the mouth, which is very pink, and also there appears to be a flap of skin here, so when the jaws open, this opens with it to give a stretching uh, form to the mouth. So we just put a little bit more red in there, make that a little bit more pinky, and a touch of yellow so it doesn't end up being too pinky pink. And I'm going to use that just inside. There. It's slightly darker than the underside, which is great. So just on the roof of the mouth there, on the tongue. Now there are some shadows around here. We're not concerned about those shadows just yet. They're not important just yet. We just focus on the actual basic colours. And there onto the skin that stretches out when those jaws open. Now, I think we nearly have all those bits and pieces in there. Very good, very good. Just touches here and here. Now I can take that same colour. Once again, I can add yellow to that, more white, and this would be perfect for my sandy colour in the background. So I'm going to take that and use that in the background sandy space here, add a touch of water to it, and use that around here. Now, in the background, you can see it's very descriptive uh, in terms of the idea of a desert or something of that nature, but it's very open. That is to say, if you decide to change the background, if you decide to add in something else, add in different colours, add in different plants, by all means, feel free to do so. Never be afraid to express your own sense of imagination or playfulness in your art. And that goes for even something like this where you have something very set like the dinosaur. Well, you may not be able to change too much about the dinosaur, but that's to say, if you, if you want to, of course you can, but you can certainly be much more playful and expressive with your background. <laughs>
Gray is a wonderful color because it's a color into which you can put every other color to create varieties of gray. So you can have blue grays, yellow grays, green grays, red grays, brown grays, and so on and so forth. So gray is a wonderful color in that regard in terms of versatility. Now I'll use a little bit more blue there and I'm gonna, you can see the shadow from T-Rex coming across. I'm going to just suggest a little bit of that shadow there and there. And then the stones and the rocks there. And that's it. That's as much as we need to do now for a wash. We filled in all the basic spaces so you can see clearly what is the sky, what are the mountains, where the landscape is, or the sandy uh, soil in this case, T-Rex himself, and then the variety of different plants that we have. That's as much as we need to do for a wash. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of time to dry, and that completes part one. As I mentioned, this is quite a complicated painting, so take your time, but also have fun and enjoy playing with the wash colours. See you in part two, where I will show you the next step of layering up your colors. Bye for now. Bye.